And I'm going to continue now with some really dark paint, some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue to mix a rich dark brown. I'm going to use a fine detail brush, something like a number three, to paint things like the window panes, the edge of the guttering, downpipes, little bits of detail on the building like that. When, with the building as far away as this one here, the windows are very much side on and they're just a little slit in the wall really. And I'm going to keep progressing now from the middle distance to the foreground, putting in these window frames. And when I paint a window like this, I'm not painting the frame, I'm putting in the dark colour behind the window pane inside the cottage. And what we're left with, the bit of white paper we're left with, surrounded by the stone colour, becomes the casement or frame of the window. And then we can just emphasise how the foliage is creeping around the bottom of this window frame. A bit of lemon yellow in here. Let it drift amongst the dark. I'll use the side of the brush to create a little bit of dry brushwork here. Paint needs to be fairly thick for this. Now a little bit more dark brown. And let's make this window frame look like it's set back. And perhaps just a little touch of, of shadow in there. Okay, now again with this little one, just further into the picture here, I think we need a bit of shadow again to make that look more set back in the frame. And then I can work with some of this dark colour. This, this is cobalt blue and burnt sienna to just pick out one or two more bits of mortar between the stones where it goes round the corner there and disappears amongst the greenery in the shadow. I think we could pick out a few edges of tiles along this roof. These are helping the perspective as well. All these lines follow the perspective lines. A little bit of warmth onto the side of the chimneys, into the shadow. And then there's those little chimney pots over there. I'll take a little bit of raw sienna and burnt sienna. And that's the beauty of the masking fluid. I've left a nice white area which I can just drop that, that colour onto. Well now we'll look at this thatched roof. An important consideration here, and this is often the case when you're working from photographs, don't just look at that area of your image and think what colour shall I mix for that. Think about the colours you've used already. You almost don't need to consult the photograph. We'll start with some of the sky colour again. Cobalt blue and cobalt violet. And we'll make a slightly greyer version of that, just like we did in the sky, by adding some burnt sienna. Some of that warm colour from the stone. This will help to look a bit like straw as well in the thatch. Raw sienna and burnt sienna. Now there's quite a lot of moss growing amongst this old thatch. So we'll take a bit of lemon yellow and we'll take some oriolin and cobalt blue to mix a nice green. Now so that these colours are allowed to merge on the paper and, and mix in and form new colours, I'm going to wet the whole of the roof area with clear water. And start by dropping in some of the raw sienna and burnt sienna. Well worth wetting it first because it just makes it a lot more fluid and allows the colours to mix. Gives you a bit longer to work on it as well. Now some of that sky colour. Try and make your brush strokes at this point follow the slope and angle of the roof. So it emphasises the shape. Now the greyer version of that, getting that more at the top so it starts to pick out the top of the roof against the sky. And then there's this bit of moss and lichen growing on the roof so we'll add a, we'll add a touch of green into it. Not too much, it wants to be a hint really that. And maybe a, just a touch of lemon yellow where the creeper has joined up with the roof. Bit of that darker green, the Viridian, Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Sienna. 
Again, using the point of the brush to pick out a few leaf shapes. Now with a bit more brown colour created with cobalt blue and burnt sienna. We'll look at this area here where there's a slight bit of shadow. Still working onto that soft background so it merges in. Same thing has happened here. Let's make it slightly warmer there with a bit more burnt sienna in it. Just that bit of shadow there at that right hand side of the arch in the roof. Now a bit more of the grey for the top to pick out some of the shape in the top of the roof. Okay, now some more of that colour from the roof, from the sky rather. Cobalt blue and cobalt violet. And we'll paint that onto this little porch way here. Again, so it's reflecting the colour on the sky. Touch of the raw sienna and burnt sienna. Try and leave a little bit of white paper at a point like this to look like the light sparkling off the tiles. We've got some quite strong trees at this left hand side. So I'm going to just use some of the shadow colour. Firstly amongst the foliage itself. And then bring it down onto the path, casting some shadows, pointing you almost, pointing the viewer towards the buildings. Sort of a dappled shadow, breaking up the shapes. Well, really, it's just a matter of a few finishing touches now, remembering all the time not to get carried away and put too much detail in. And really, we don't want to overwork it, so I think that's that for that painting. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you the confidence to tackle buildings. We've looked at simplification to get the shapes down correctly. And we've looked at how perspective can affect the scene. So happy painting. Now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.